What's up guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna talk about cold starting. Now, this is uh, towards the middle of February and so most of the colds we started now have 30 to 45 days on them. So this is a perfect time to break down this, which is something that I have not really broken down in this fashion in any of my videos ever before. So this should be quite a treat. What I wanna talk about today is the five fundamental things that I wanna have very solid in my young horses before taking them into the arena. So if you're like me and you've got about 30 to 45 days on your young horse and you're ready for open space, but you wanna do it safe, and you want to do it without causing any problems it's going to take you a long time to fix and you want to make their first experiences in the main arena a good experience and making sure that you've got your fundamentals and your foundation as solid as possible to build and start developing your tools on then this video is for you so if you're ready let's get after it Before we get started with my five cold starting fundamentals, um, I noticed that many of you who watch the channel are not subscribed to the channel. It would help me uh, reach more people, help the channel grow, and make sure that you're not missing out on any new content that we are posting. So please subscribe to this channel if you find any value in it. Um, so with that said, let's get started. So fundamental number one is going to be self-locomotion. Now, as simple as that may seem, it's very important for my young horses to learn to hold their gait uh, by themselves without me having to chase after them with the whip or working after them or kissing after them, okay? I want them to hold that gait. And I'm, you know, I'm very, it's very important for me that very early on my horses learn to extend their stride and think forward, okay? So sometimes just standing there and letting them do it on their own until, and only interfering whenever they're breaking down to a walk or to a trot can get them to lope a little slower, a little shorter strided than I like it. But it's more important at that stage that they hold that gait, even if they're going a little slower than I like, until they really understand and learn that once I ask something, they need to hold it until I say otherwise. Now, if I feel that they're getting a little bit sucked back on me or a little slower then whenever they do end up breaking to a trot I will make it a little bit more of a of a statement uh, telling them to keep going but if you keep if you keep that up and you do that well um, and you're clear with your body language and you're you're you know you're clear enough whenever they do they, they do break down you tell them to keep going eventually they're going to you're gonna see them free their stride and think forward and they're not gonna think about breaking to a trot anymore or just they're not gonna wait for you to ask them to stop or to roll back okay so it's very important that you do that until they look forward and they extend their stride and they're not thinking about stopping or anything else and, and they're only thinking about going forward, that is going to be the good time to, um, to ask them to stop. So fundamental number two is going to be the woe. It's very important for me that early on my horses respond very well to the woe, whether I'm lunging them or I'm, uh, on the lunge line or free or I'm riding them, okay? It's very important. And that's something that sometimes I feel is, is uh, if, if, if you don't have the natural desire, if you don't, if you don't instill and develop a natural desire uh, for the horse to stop by themselves and really feel your cue and listen to your voice in order to stop and start too quickly to depend on your hands to stop, then sometimes uh, um, you, you, you can get into trouble to where it'll take you a long time to get the woe back because you're gonna have to do it mechanically with really teaching them to back up and all of that stuff. So I like to develop it very early on and I like for them to learn to stop without me interfering with my hands when I'm riding them. So at the lunge line, this is where it starts or, or riding free whenever. Uh, so, so some, something that I always did with my young horses is that I always said whoa or said the word whoa in a moment where I felt like they were thinking about it. If let's say they're loping and they're thinking about breaking down to a trot or they're just slowing down in their mind, this is the good time to say whoa. If they're not responding very well to do when they're free to the word and they keep going and you feel you're desensitizing them more than anything to the word, then do it on a lunge line, all right? So when they get the horses that are a little bit more forward and and think more forward and don't think don't have the woe in them or or not quite a suck back then these types of horses you're going to want to do that on the lunge line the ones that the ones that need to to, to 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 be chased a little bit more that need to learn to to have that self locomotion those it's going to be easier to teach them to woe off the you know off lunging around free but it's very important that they learn that very early on the key is going to be when you first get on them though when you first get on them and you walk around and you trot around and you lope around 
the, the, it's very important to say the word whenever you feel that they're, they're thinking about breaking down to a walk or thinking about breaking down to a trot from the lope, okay? This is a good time to say whoa and relax and you don't want to interfere with your, hand at that, your hands at that time because you really want them to learn to listen to the whoa, to feel your seat and use their hind end to stop. So if you can teach them to, to, to really react strongly to the word without needing any hands whatsoever, this is going to go a very long way when teaching them to stop. Now, it, 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 it's very important also early on to teach them to respond good to the hands and teach them how to get away from the hand pressure and teach them to back up. But it's, it's important for me to keep those two separate as long as, uh, until both become really solid and as long as I can. So this brings me to uh, fundamental number three, which is going to be the back up. Now for fundamental number three, I like to use the long line, okay? So this is something that I do pretty early on with the side pull and then I, in order for them to gain confidence with having the rope thrown over their back and their hind legs and me getting behind them and patting them on the back, uh, on their butt and, and, and pulling them backwards and sideways, okay? So it's very important to, 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 to get them to, to, to understand all that uh, as best as you can with the side pull, but I feel that sometimes the, the ones that are a little bit more pushy, <coughs> They, it's, it's, it's better to go to the snaffle sooner so that they, so that you, you know, they don't learn to just kind of push against you. So I do it with a side pull first, then I do it with the snaffle. But the goal here is that, uh, and before I send them forward with the long lines, I always teach them to go backwards, okay? So this forward into the bridle with the long line, this is gonna be in probably another video. This is kind of the next steps of, uh, of my cold starting program. So at this stage, all we're gonna focus, about, uh, focus on is making sure that when we pull back on the long lines, and they have a direct contact, a direct pressure, which is usually probably one of the first time that they will ever have a direct contact in their mouth. Usually it's gonna be side pulls through flexions and whatever, but this is gonna be where the first time we'll have a direct contact. So you wanna go slow, and then whenever you feel a brace or you feel resistance, they're wondering what to do, this is when you wait. And then whenever they move their feet back and you feel that give, this is when you release. And if you're precise about it and you're patient and they're not, you know, and they're ready for it, then usually it doesn't take too much time to get them to understand that a direct contact like that is gonna mean get away from it backwards and start backing up. And then you can increase the pressure with your hand until they f until you feel pretty confident that they understand that the more you pull, the, that, that th they know what to do in order to get away from that pressure. And then you can make it a little bit more uh, complicated and, and a little bit more productive by setting yourself up 90 degrees to the horse um, and then pulling them, yielding their hindquarters away and having them follow their nose through that movement. Repeat that to the other side, then go back in the centers just so that they're used to getting pulled a little bit more from one direction than the other and quickly this is going to tie into the fundamental number five that is very important to me so let's talk about that now something that I'm for sure going to want to be able to do with my young horses when I first start going in the open space or in the indoor arena is, is to lunge them okay so and this is also uh, uh, consequently a very good opportunity to teach them to respond to the pull okay when I get on them I'm going to want to open my hand and pull their nose left and right in order to, get, to, to, to guide them and find my comfort zone. And so if they're not used to that going forward, then I'm going to have a problem. And sometimes I may, be, uh, I, I may have to pull hard and they may be slowing down. So I may need to put more leg pressure and then that may just cause them to, to, to pull against me and, and want to get away from that pressure. And that's what I often see um, people having some problems with when they go into the open space or go to the arena without having all of their fundamental tools tools in place, okay? So this tool is going to be very, very useful um, to do whenever, before you get on them, or so let's say you get on them and then you feel that, oh, there's too much brace, there's too much resistance, then you can get off, put the lunge line back on them and do that exercise again. So what I want to be able to do is not just lunge them around me, but I want to be able to chase them forward with my voice, chase them forward with the whip as I pull them towards me. And instinctively, that type of pressure, they usually brace against and want to freeze and run away from me. So you got to start slow, but I want to do it until I'm able to pull them quite firmly towards me and add quite a fair amount of pressure with my voice and my whip and that doesn't phase them. They just follow their nose towards me as I pull and extend their stride following their nose, uh, um, you know, pushing themselves forward as I, as I uh, uh, increase the pressure. And so it's, it's, a, it's a very simple exercise once again, but once again, a very valuable one down the road.
Now finally, fundamental number five. Fundamental number five is probably my favorite element of horse training. This is the part that I like to develop the most in my young horses. Not always the easiest, but whenever it just clicks, it just, it just becomes such a valuable training tool. What I want to be able to do is, is kind of a combination of the flexion and the pull. So I want to be able to go forward whether I'm walking, trotting or loping and I want to be able to take my horse into a full flexion without my horse bracing, resisting and stopping and losing its forward motion. Okay, so the way that I teach them that is, is, is I, and I like to do that a lot in the round pen where it's just me, my horse, nothing else. This way they're more focused on me. It's just me and them and there's not any gra of that gravitational pull that you get from riding in an open space where they know where the barn is and that's kind of where they pull you at. So I do it in a round pen where I can walk, take them in a full flexion and use my legs. They keep walking and, and sometimes get them to do a nice uh, step to the inside without losing their forward motion. If you feel that they stop moving forward to make that step, then you don't want to release. You just want to keep, um, you want to keep, you, you want to keep that flexion there. You want to use your outside leg lightly until you feel that they do it moving forward. But the, the sooner that you can walk your horse and sort of, in a way, wrap it around your inside leg without the horse bracing, losing any forward motion, the, 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 the more you're going to have control over them following their nose when guiding them. And um, I, I, like to, I like to have my young horses really hold themselves up when I first take them to the outside space. And a lot of the times is, is I feel that if I don't have any tools to work them whenever they are really dropping their shoulders or they're getting away from me or they're really tight in their body, I want to have a tool that I can right away bring them back to 100% control over their body energy to a 100% relaxed state, okay? So, so whenever I'm loping or trotting one around for the first time in an open space and I feel them getting a little bit tight. The same as I use the flexion, bring them to a standstill with a flexion when I first teach them to actually walk, trot or lope, you know, for the first time in the round pen. If they get, whoa, then I want to get them back under control by doing a flexion, release, go again. So we develop that into where I feel that they're uh, not with me 100%. So then I take, I open my hand and I take them in a flexion until they, they kind of really, really give me that flexion fully without losing any forward motion. Then I release, go forward again. And I want to be able to do that both direction. Once you can do that, they learn to really steer, keeping their body up, using their hind end and and it also teaches them to keep that energy located in the right parts of their body to really move uh, in an optimal way in order to be uh, a performance horse. So if you want to get you know see the in-depth video of all of these exercises it's not easy to summarize these you know in a very clear way in a short uh, video so I've got uh, each of those fundamentals broken down to the best of my ability um, uh, uploaded to the comfort zone horse training video series so it's available for whoever is subscribed or if you are not subscribed then you can go and check it out you're gonna get a seven day free trial so you are free to browse the entire library of content for seven days and decide if this is something for you and just like the rest of all of the fundamentals i'm going to upload the full test ride on the comfort zone horse training video series all right so i hope that you like this video i hope that i managed to uh, clearly cover all of those elements to where you can go and put them into practice now if you've got any questions don't hesitate to reach out once again this has been fun see you in the next one